All right, today we're at the yard in Navyville. All these cars sitting here came from that mill down in Georgia. Navyville Switcher handles them. These look like loaded cars, so I guess they're going to carry them down there and deliver them one day. But I was under the impression the cars would be dropped off at the plant and we just pick them up empty, but these look like their cars are loaded here. All right, thank you. As you see, these ain't the type of car Tobo shoestring would be riding. These are pretty much open decks in here. No holes to hide in. I don't know what they carry, whether they're carrying corn or wheat. I don't know. And all the tracks are gone in the rest of the yard. I'm going to try to walk back show the roundhouse what's left of it. But it's all grown up now. There used to be a caboose track right down there and some bins for coal for the cabooses. And on up here would have been the sand towers, air compressor stuff for them to do maintenance on the railroad cars. All right, bye. Well, the railroad's going to come back in cleaned up a lot. They left an old telegraph pole, of course. They got rid of them years ago. You can see where they would have had, where they would have set them. Over there was the boiler, and they used to have concrete walls, but they got rid of that. And over here was where they had the roundhouse all piled up in a big heap after they tore it down. And right through here where I'm going was a wire track that would come in and shoot straight back. It came in from the southbound direction, and it came in from the northbound direction, or north end south end and north end and come up through here. Eventually they would have gone out there to the turntable, but the turntable's been gone since 90, 1930 or something like that. I think it went up to women to North Carolina because they got a new turntable that year. They quit using them here because the engines were so big they wouldn't fit on them. It was only 85 foot turntable and it's gas powered. Look, right there's a piece of stone might be left over from the roundhouse. There's a concrete roundhouse with a flat roof. And I see you can get on YouTube and look up Abbeville historic photos. And there'll be some of this yard out here so you can see it. I'm going to keep walking around and see what I find. This is probably what was left off the boiler room. It was over there and they pushed it over here. I'm going to go keep walking, see what else I can find. Thank you. I looked for a date on this rail. I don't know where it came from or how long it's been here or what year it is. But you can tell it's still pretty nice height rail. I found a roundhouse. These are the front doors. That was the left wall of it. It's off over in that direction. I know. I don't know how much concrete you can see over there. But this is it. It's just a big pile of concrete. And the track, I'm on the track side of it, so the turntable would have been down there. So I'm going to keep looking around, see what I can find. That last place was over there. And they look like coal bins, but I'm not sure because there weren't any sitting out there in the old days. Uh, I don't know how much you can see, but there's rubble all the way over there to the top right of my screen, going straight across. This was a eight-stall roundhouse with a turntable when they built it. And when the, uh, they started getting a double to Twin Pacifics and the big 4882s, they were too big for this roundhouse. Of course, they kind of got where they didn't have to rebuild a locomotive just because they come out of Atlanta or come out of Hamlet. They was able to go from all the way from one city to the other without any maintenance on them. It's kind of hard to see. But we got concrete. I'm standing on top of the concrete pile in the middle of the roundhouse. All right, thank you.
You can see that's the rebar they used in this place, so that's probably why they didn't figure it was going to last long and they went ahead and tore it down. It's all, the roof was already falling in. But you can look that metal over there. <coughs> all right. See you. All right, you can see I'm standing on a piece of the roof of it now. You can see more of the rebar. It's really square rod and flat rod. It wasn't like modern rebar. So it didn't hold up too well. There's another part of the roof over there. And that's the other wall. And I see what it looks like maybe what's left of the boiler over there. For the southern side or the right hand side of the roundhouse. I don't know what the railroad tie is over there. I don't remember any standing up like that, but they might have put it in there to hold stuff. Rails or whatever. They did have a bunch of stuff stored in here before they knocked it down. Right here is the base of one of the piers, so you can see how big the piers were. They weren't really that big, probably not that strong. Up from way I see build concrete buildings nowadays are a little bit thicker and stuff. I'm still on the front edge. I'm probably about three stalls in from the right or the south side. All right. Found an old ground throw switch stand. I don't know whether that was switched to track or was attached to a derail, but it's out here way far away from where any switches would have been. There's an old four-hole joint bar. That would have been old because most of them in my lifetime been three holes. I mean, I don't know what year that would have gone back to. Maybe 1800s. I don't know. I'm at the back south end corner of the roundhouse. Maybe now you can see a little bit better. This was the outside wall and the tracks went right up through here and I've been up here on locomotives turning them around. Getting them to face a different direction. You can barely see the wall over there for the boiler room. It was over there so that uh, the Y track would have come straight down through here. I guess in that direction. I'm having a hard time reading it because the ground looks like it's been torn up by bulldozers years ago. All right, thank you. Got a pile of rail anchors out here. These are the older ones. They got newer designs. They have these on the bottom side of the rail to keep the rail from expanding north and south. They will lock up against the railroad tie and help hold the rail in place. So the rail, when it heated up, it would expand and get taller and not longer. And Because if it went longer, it would distort the track, push it out and stuff like that. Change the gauge, break it up, different bad things. All right, thank you. All right, you got this big structure here, and it looked like it squeezed around the wall, so part of that was inside the building, and part of it was out. You might have some more of it laying over there, because it looks like the same bolt structures and stuff as you got here. But that head on looks like it would have been the top end of a boom or something, where the boom swivels. And I assume they could pick up stuff out of the cars over there and swing them over here and bring them in the back of the shop. Because that's where we are now. We're on the back side of the shop. A lot of the stones, what fell off of that one, got pushed backwards. Knocked it down this way. But there's another piece of wood over there and it's all bolted together. Maybe that was part of this whole system. I'm not sure. I don't remember when it was standing up recognizing this all right thank you i found this out here laying out here next to the coal bin for the bunker there's the old coal bin over there 
I guess it could have been, it could have been the building too. But this is sitting out here. It looks like it had hens there. And the hens there to pick something up and down. And the rest of it just a structural. There's a piece of metal over there laying on it. I don't think it has anything to do with this because this is like coated in old oil and that's kind of like raw rust over there. I don't know what it's doing. It's been out here for years. I don't know whether that's upside down, upside up, or what. All right, let me get back to hunting for the... Well, was... All right, this would have been the end of the Y track here. It stops at the top of a hill. You can see the light in the background from a cow pasture, but I don't think no cows are down there now. It used to be. I'm going to look to see if I can find any dates on these tracks. These rails. Maybe I can find one. I'm going to try to read it. O H T. E was that one eight five five? Off old for this railroad, that's the age of it. Five six. It was like a son E I I N E five five six two. I don't know, I can't find the date on here. I'm looking. Found a piece of glass and a pool can of paint or something, whatever that is. And I'll be speaking someplace out here. A friend of mine used to tell me they did a lot of drinking out here. So I find all kinds of bottles. South Carolina dispensary bottles out here, but I don't know where it'd be. I'll be out here someplace. Uh. There's some four hole joint bars. Two sets of them. Look like some closure rails up there. They're not closed guard rails. I don't know why these would be in here unless they took them from an old switch to make the track with. Like I said, it was a little short track. It'd probably be about three or four engines past the roundhouse there. You weren't turning around much when you got on this track, but you know. Locomotives, you turn them around for the engineer, and uh, they turn boxcars or something around if it had to be unloaded from a certain side when he got it to the to the mill or wherever it was being delivered to. It had to be delivered in the right direction for unloading, and that's what they use this for. All right, thank you. Okay, I was wrong when I described how this was put up there. That broke off of that side, and that side came over to here. So that big butt head would have been up here in the middle of the track right about here to hit the draw head. I don't know if somebody actually hit it so hard it busted or why it broke, but it did. All right, thank you all. Oh, it's hard walking out here. All right, I'm headed back. Maybe I'll see something leaving on out. All right, let me read this again. It's a 90S BSCO, so I assume that's Bethlehem Steel Company. And it looks like it says Maryland, and then it's got 12 tick marks for December, and it says 1923 down there. And then it says nine, 90 pounds, 
and that be for a yard of steel. And it has A R A and O H on it. I don't know if you can read it or not. Alright. Alright, some more views of the roundhouse before I leave here. This is the back south corner. I'm standing over by where the boiler used to be. And it looks like it's gone, the boiler room. And there used to be a track right down through here with the switch track, the uh, Y track, I mean. Seven or eight stalls, I forget. Roundhouse. Of course, I did a lot of their work out front between the front of the roundhouse and the turntable. If you ever look at old pictures, I had more locomotive parts outside than I did inside because I think the roundhouse got was a little bit too small when the locomotives got bigger. This railroad came to Abbeville in 1882 and it made down to Atlanta in 1897 or something like that. I might have the dates kind of messed up there, but yeah, they built out of uh, Monroe, North Carolina down here. As, uh started out as the Monroe, Greenwood, Abbeville Railroad, then they changed it to the Carolina, Georgia, or uh, something like that. I forget. Maybe I'll remember and I'll come back and tell y'all. Alright, here we got some more insulated rail joints. They don't want whatever's on the side and to cause a occupied track on the side or on the passing track right there. So anything sitting in here will short these tracks out and they don't want that to interfere with the signal on that track and cause that track to be fouled. So that's how they do that. With the insulated rail joints right there, I walked past it. That's another one. All right, bye-bye. All right, I can't get down there to it because all the bushes up here, I can't get down there and see it, but there's a creek down there. And there's some concrete work around it, and that used to be where they pumped the water from to get it to the roundhouse to use it. And there used to be a road down there you could walk or ride. It went to the roundhouse, but it's all grown up now. All right, these are cars that Hobo would probably prefer. They got a hole there you can hide in. They got a full deck here. Lots of brake shoes. Of a broken part. Uh, another hole there. I don't know how he does it. I don't know if he could get in there that pipe running through there. Uh, I'm still on the grain cars out here on the side. We're on the yard track. One, I guess. Three compartments on this car. I got three bays. Part of the brake connection. All right. I forget what they call that triple valve, I think. And that's what when it reduce and increase air pressure that determines whether the brakes go on and off. <coughs> you can see the pipe from the air the piston coming over to here. 
there's your air reservoir up there you got two reservoirs one's for a train line and one's for emergency if you ever run out or have to put the emergency brakes on there draw it off the emergency side and it's all done through this that regulates what happens by your air pressure so if you dump a lot of air at once this valve will open up to the tank up there, supply air to the piston over there to apply brakes. Alright, thank you. Alright, I count 19 cars out here. That's the bottom end down there. So I counted them all up. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 of them. Alright, thank you. Ah, uh, you see the caps on there? I assume this has probably got plastic in it. It's probably for a prismian. Because it takes plastic. This wouldn't be cars for the uh, grain shed, I don't think. That one would be. A lot of the rest of them down through there. But I assume these were plastic cars. I don't know. Maybe. Alright, uh, right over there used to be the ass pit for the southbound passenger trains. And a friend of mine, he's dead now, but he was an old black man, Ben Crawford. And that was his job when he was like 15 or 16 or 17. Because he would clean the ass out of the southbound passenger trains. You can kind of see where they got rocks to fill it in with. Alright, thank you. Right along in here, I'm not exactly sure, but I assume it's right in here because you got a clear path. Used to be a big old staircase came from the track all the way down here. And I would see black people that getting off the train out of Atlanta. We'd get down there and walk there and be walking home that way. But it's gone now. Big old wooden staircase. I remember walking up it. All right, this is the Vienna Street Bridge. And they, like I said, they did some modification on it. They made it where it's a ballast deck bridge instead of an open, open deck. People waving at me, friends of mine. All right, thank you. I'll walk around and take some pictures of it. The passing tracks over there has got four big pieces of steel. And this one's got two of them, and they're kind of like wider than the rails. But that's the main line. And it does have a little rock come down. That wood used to come together, but now they got a grate on it. All right, thank you. And the depot's just right up over there on the other side of the power line where it used to be. Now down in here on the right, big old hill that goes up. They used to have a monkey zoo down here back in the early 30s or something like that. I knew a few people that have been to it, but nowadays it's getting hard to find anybody that lived back then. But you could go up there and see the monkeys in their cages and stuff. I walked up through there, all around up through there. I've never seen any cages or any concrete or anything from it. But it used to be up there. That was a tourist site in Abbeville. All right, this was an old black cemetery. I guess it dates back to the 1800s and stuff. They finally taken pride in keeping it clean. This used to be all grown up with trees and bushes out here, but they've been cleaning it up and stuff. So 
supposed to be a lot of history about Abu and people in Abbeville. That's an interesting one. Let me see what type of date I can find on it. Adeline Hamilton, born 1863, died 1818, May 12. A lot of old graves out here. Evelyn Jackson, 1881-1968. Tina White, died 1933, 1901-1939, 1903-1984. 1899, 1983. Wow. Uh, the Diamond Square would have been up there. You can see the water here. They said you would have put water on locomotives. The depot would have been up there and all the tracks up on top of that hill. And this is the black graveyard out here. That's Vienna Street down there. I don't know the name of the street I'm on. All right, thank you. All right, Dennis Carter, Flora Carter, 1837, died in 1912. Flora Carter, 1844, died in February 23, 1919. Resting in hope of a glorious resurrection. I think they all are. Thank you. Uncle and aunt, Buchanan, James A. Buchanan, Rebecca Buchanan, from 1856 to 1925 and 1858 to 1925. Then we got more modern one over here. Jeannie B. Greer Hurst died February 1973. Alice Watt, husband and mother, September 4th, 1894 to 1936. Wow. All right, Jim Jones died 1950. Mary M. Jones, born 1855, died June 17, 1916. He wrote to him above in memory by his son, Richard J. Hogan. We love thee well, but Jesus loved her best. That's neat. I like that. All right, Austin M. Hurst, South Carolina, Private 567 Service. B and Q and C World War One. December seventh, eighteen ninety six, February thirteenth, nineteen fifty one. That's pretty cool. God bless you, sir. Thank you. All right. Move uh, Farrell, wife of Ferry. B. Parks, born December 17, 1867, died, I don't know what that says, E.S.T. or B.B.T. or something, 12, 1896, and that was James Bryan, born March 1828, died, so he was a slave. Died December 24th, and I don't know what year it is, 1902. And it's got some smaller writing, but I can't read it. All right, that's where fuel trucks used to go up to service the locomotives on the Diamond Spur. And over there is one of the driveways for the concrete mill I was talking about in my, on the previous video. And the second one is way down there, the other driveway.